Today, let's talk about cuttings and propagating. Alright, welcome back to Heartway Farms. Uh, we have cuttings and propagation that we're talking about today. And one of those things that we got um, kind of going here is some elderberries. Uh, we had our good friends down at the Texas Boys send us up some of their elderberry cuttings. Uh, you can get your elderberry cuttings from pretty much anywhere. Um, some of the things that work with propagating or setting up the cuttings are things like elderberry, blueberries, uh, blackberries, raspberries, um, lilacs, uh, mulberries, uh, all those types of uh, trees, woody type species can be um, used in the cutting and setting up for uh, propagating for their plants. And the reason that you would do this is because it's a way to get well, basically free um, products for your homestead, your farm, your property, um, your edible food 401k. Um, as the old Texas dad calls it. So we like to set up um, things that are able to be used multi-species as far as um, that we can eat them, that the animals on our property can have access to them and eat them. And one of the reasons that we're doing this on our homestead here is because we are setting up some windbreaks with some natural hedgerows and um, brake lines on the property. So the north side of our property and the west side of our property, we're gonna be running about 400 feet worth of hedge lines to help break up the, um, the winds and provide the shelter belt on the property. So let's get into this here. Uh, like I said, Texas dad hooked us up with these. These are elderberries, and he gave us a whole bunch of them, all different sizes. Um, everything from something like the size of my pinky all the way down to a little twig. And they all work. Um, I'll show you a quick finish type product that we've got going here is this is one of our soil um, Packets that you can get on Amazon. We'll put links for them but down below um, And you basically just rehydrate them. So they start off looking like these little wafers and Then you put them into the water and you let them rehydrate. So an example over here would be is just drop it into the to the water and and let that go. Just let it sit there while we're going here. And it takes uh, anywhere from three to five minutes to expand. It doesn't take super long, but they just they just rehydrate and they're kind of, they end up like this here. They got a little bolt of um, wet soil that's neatly packaged. And basically the benefit is, is instead of dealing with a big loose bag of soil and maybe a pot that's way too big, you can start these off and you can have them a lot more portable and a lot smaller while they're initially developing. Um, so these are expanded, they're ready to go. Let's talk about some of the cuttings real quick. So Texas Dad, uh, one of the things that he does is he cuts them at an angle at the bottom. You'll have different people who do the different things with this, but he cuts the angle at the bottom just to show you which way. Another way that you can look at it and tell is right here, you have what's going to be the leaves or the new branches coming out and they're pointing up. So they have a V going up in that direction. So a couple different indicators is even if you got your cuttings and they were squared off, all you have to do is look and let's get real close here. There's a little, there's a little mouth at the bottom of the cutting here. Actually, that's the top of the cutting, but below where the, the new leaf or the new branch is gonna be. And that mouth sits at the bottom with the new leaf coming out the top. So that's another way, just a quick indicator there. So you orient your cutting and a couple of the steps that I do is, and this is just because other people do it and it works well, it helps to just increase the chance of the, the cutting uh, taking root well, is you use some type of a root cleaner um, and simply you, you mix it up, you have it ready, and you can just swirl um, the cutting into there and just it helps to kill off um, things like the nematodes and insects and things that would come and larvae that would be on here or fungus that would be on here that would attack the cutting in the early stages because one of the things you don't want is a bunch of little bugs to hatch and then to come up and eat your leaf structure because that would thwart the cutting from growing. So you swirl it around in here and get it just real kind of treated real quick and then you take a rooting hormone. We'll attach a link for that as well. 
Um, and then the rooting hormone, while it's still damp, you can just take and, and dab it on the base of your, um, of your cutting. Now, that's the simplest way to do it. Another way you can do it is people like to wound or score the base of the cutting down low. And this, this just, uh, you can chop it like this. You can actually take and, and make a green spot open up. Um, but all you're doing is wounding the bottom to cause that to want to root out um, down at the base and, and establish a better root system. So a lot of people will do what they call wounding or scoring the cutting. Once again, once you do that, swirl it around, treat it with the, uh, the root treatment. Once again, taking care of the bugs, the funguses, and then your rooting hormone which just helps once again. This is probably not deep enough. I'd like to get it up a little bit higher than that, but it's not necessary for some of these cuttings that are really kind of generous to how they grow. So back to the rooting hormone real quick. A rooting hormone, a way to make one of your own is if you have willow trees on your property, you can actually go out and get a whole bunch of cuttings uh, from, the, from the willow tree and just cut them to where they would fit into um, a jar like this and drop them into there and let them soak because willows have a lot of the rooting hormone naturally in them. So you can basically just take a, a willow branch and make a cutting and shove that in the ground and it will just grow itself pretty well. So that is the idea of the rooting hormone. It just helps the roots to become established. Then all you do with this here is you take your cutting and it's got, a, these have a little, little packet at the top here. Just take and open it up, shove it in and then you form it up and around here. This is where it gets just a little bit messy. But you see all the, the moisture, the water that's being held in there. And you just kind of get that bunched up tight around there. And then a way to make it a little bit cleaner to not have to deal with so much of the moisture getting dripped all over is just to grab yourself a piece of uh, plastic wrap cellophane and put it on the bottom and wrap it up and around and then just give it a quick little spin. And then these can just be set off to the side and put in here. A couple of these I did a few, few days back and you can already see that the moisture is starting to take place in here and the, the leaves are starting to want to push out a little bit. Something you can do to make it a little bit more um, moist in there is you can actually get the like one of those totes from one of your local stores and you can take all these moist packets, line them up in there and cover them up and it will just create its own little greenhouse. Um, and then they don't have to have like access to a whole bunch of light or anything like this stage. This is why it's a good winter project. So you can get these things going, you can get them rooting out and you can wait for this to establish a good root mass at the base of it. And then you would then move on to the planning process. So. If you got a bunch of these laying around, we happened to have a whole bunch of blueberry bushes one year, so we kept the, the um, little pots that came with them. You can take some of the leaves from outside, shove them in the bottom so that the holes don't get, um, don't just let all of your soil out. You fill it up with a potting mix, and you simply take your plastic off, put your root system into here, and transplant that so that it establish a bigger root system for you to transplant it out into your property. So rooting is a super simple way to get more um, product off of your land even if you have mulberry trees that you want to just go get cuttings from and you want to root them out and you want to take them to a different part of your property or make propagate more of them. If you have some friends that don't have them it's a way to give away some of the stuff on your property to help your your uh, friends establish um, more product on their land as well. So. Once we get these going here, these get established, like I said, you can take them and you can plant them directly in the ground. Once they have a root mass established, you'll actually start to see the roots start to push out and create a clump of roots at the bottom. You would simply just take those and tease the roots out and plant them into the soil. Um, or like I said, you can transplant them and get a bigger root mass so it's more established. So some of the benefits of the elderberry or the mulberry trees, stuff like that of, of those natures, is that they they grow quickly and they establish a lot of um, product very quickly so people use elderberries 
uh, to make an elderberry syrup. They use them to feed their, the wildlife on their property. They just have a lot of uses. They're very um, multifunction as far as, you know, for personal use, for medicinal use, for, um, for the wildlife. So they just serve a great purpose. So like I said, wrapping it up is things that you can use um, that work out really well just to create a hedge line or to create mass on your property. Um, elderberries, mulberries, uh, willows, uh, to make hedge lines, they work out really well. Um, and to make those, uh, those products on your property to get more of them. All right, so as these progress along, we'll give you updates. We'll probably give you a, a planting video this spring here coming up. And if you want any of these elderberry cuttings, make sure you head on over to the Texas Boys. Uh, I believe that they have a place on their website, texasboys.com, and they will hook you up with a great handful of cuttings. They do elderberry. Um, I believe that they do some figs, a lot of different figs that they do down there, and they are building a massive food 401k forest on their property. So we'll see you all later. Thanks.